We've got Morton DK Diff Killer. We've got John Alban, world class lover. <laughs> and we've got Piers Warmer, Symphony Foreigner. <laughs> so, this is the Twig 8 session. I'm not going to say anything else. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, does anyone want to do a different introduction, or should I just skip this slide? Okay, we're all on Twitter if you want to like ask us questions after this. To, to be clear, they were joking about HTML classes when they gave me my title. <laughs> <laughs> that is a complete lie. John is actually a first class lover. <laughs> all right, skipping this slide. <laughs> so we wanted to start off uh, first by talking about why we're changing the theme system in Drupal 8. Um, and so I want to say there are some really positive things about the Drew, Drew, theme system in Drupal 7, uh, mainly that you can do whatever the heck you want with it, as long as you know what you're doing. Um, unfortunately, there were a lot of negative things as well. So we'll talk a little bit about those. Um, for starters, the syntax of our template files only exists in the world of Drupal. Uh, it started from PHP template, which was a templating language that existed elsewhere, and in Drupal 7, we completely changed it into something that didn't exist anywhere else by adding the existence of calls like render right from our template. Um, so this is something that people outside of Drupal aren't familiar with. Uh, there's a really confusing way that we deal with variables, or sometimes these variables are objects and sometimes they're arrays, and we reference them in different ways. So if you're taking people who are non-developers and trying to get them to use template files, they need to understand data structures in a way that isn't really necessary for their normal everyday job. So that's really confusing for new people. Uh, when we print things in template files in Drupal 7, sometimes we just print the variable print classes. Sometimes we print render a variable, which is also really confusing because it sounds a little redundant. Um, but we do it all over the place in different ways. And that's also really hard for people to get a handle on when can I just print something or when do I have to render it. So that's confusing for new people as well. Uh, PHP template is just PHP. PHP is not terribly secure. So you can do horrible things from any template anywhere if you want to. When I was preparing this slide, I accidentally dropped my node table by refreshing a page I was looking at. <laughs> so that didn't go so well. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in our existing theme system. We have way too many template files. Uh, in core alone, if you wanted to remove all of your classes from places, you've got a lot of work to do just to get to a clean starting point. And to make things even worse, we don't just have template files in Drupal 7. We also have theme functions. And there are hundreds of theme functions. So sometimes your HTML is coming from a template file. Sometimes it's coming from a theme function. Trying to figure out where the source of this code is that you're frustrated with in your theme is sometimes really hard. Just can't track it down. Uh, this is a, uh, a simplified version. <laughs> of the theme system in Drupal 7. So if you wanted to know what was being passed from one place to another, uh, well, you're not going to figure it out. There's just too much stuff going on. And this is, this is kind of the nature of open source, where you start with one solution, and then a couple of years later, like, oh, we need this thing. And then you add it. And you're like, oh, we need this other thing. And you add that, too. And, you know, and then here you are 10 years later, and you're like, we have a lot of things going on. And it's no wonder that nobody can figure this out. Um, John made this diagram. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you did this or why? Yeah, so um, I gave a core conversation at DrupalCon San Francisco um, before Drupal 7 was released. I'm like, this is what we're dealing with right now. Like, and I tried to, to do a 60 second overview of this entire thing and I got really close, but it was, actually took me about 90 seconds to explain everything. Um, this is for core developers and I, at the time I figured there were maybe two or three people in the entire world who understood this whole thing. Um, it, it's just massively, massively evil. <clears throat> <laughs> um, and, it, and it turned out there was other symbology also sort of embedded in this as well. Um, you got the next slide? Oh, you don't have the other slide? Okay, that's fine. This one's better. <laughs> so all, all of these... So all of these things added up to Drupal being way too hard for new people to figure out how to learn. 
Um, and there's a lot of people who come to Drupal from other programming backgrounds or working in other areas of the web. And the first place they try and change something is the theme system. They go, okay, well, I'm going to install Drupal. Let's see if I can work in HTML. I know HTML. That's the universal language of the web. And they try and start with a theme system. They're like, oh my god, I can't do this. It's really hard. There's stuff going on everywhere. I don't understand what this render thing is. What is it? When is it an object? When is it an array? How do I print it? Do I need to sanitize it or not? Where is it coming from? And it just it becomes a detriment to the rest of the good stuff that Drupal does, that new people just can't get into it very easily. Um, I'm a developer. I started in the theme layer. A lot of current core developers started in the theme layer. That's just how you get into it. And this should not be the most frustrating part of working with Drupal. So here's this list of stuff that we wanted to fix in Drupal 8. The fact that our template files are Drupal specific, we've got mixed data types, we've got different methods of printing stuff, PHP template itself is really insecure. Uh, we've got two ways of overriding markup, templates and theme functions. We have too much stuff going on, too much of both templates and theme functions. We've got a really complicated mix of all of the subsystems that add up in the Drupal theme layer and that just makes everything way too hard to learn. So let's see if we can tackle this list of problems. So. In Drupal 8, the first thing we've decided to do is change our theme engine. So instead of using PHP template, which we've had around for a really long time, we're going to use something new called Twig. So Twig is a well-documented open source PHP templating language that most of you may or may not have heard of. Um, and it's already in existence in the internet. It's not something we're making up ourselves, which is good. Uh, it's extensible, so if it doesn't do something that Drupal needs it to do, we can write an extension for Twig to make it work for Drupal, and we have, which is good. Um, it's secure. In PHP templates, you cannot accidentally drop your node table. Um, you can't accidentally... <laughs> I will not accept patches that allow you to write SQL queries in your template files. You, you can. It will not be accepted. All right. If you if you want to shoot if you want to shoot yourself in the foot, you can do it on your own website. We're not gonna let it into core. GitHub does not count. Okay. Uh, it's also really well tested. There's a bunch of sites out there already using Twig, and it's unit tested in itself. Um, it's also pretty fast compared to other templating languages out there. Obviously, PHP is really fast. Um, it's, it's faster than some other things you might have heard of, like Smarty, which we used to have in previous versions of Drupal, which is good. Uh, it works in your IDE. So if you're a developer and you want to have debugging, uh, there are plugins for all your IDEs that can recognize Twig, which is really great. Uh, and it's a recognizable syntax. So those of you who are like, oh no, I've got to learn something new to work with Drupal, don't worry, you can read it. It reads just like logic, like English, like other things you may have seen on the web. Um, so it's not going to be scary and foreign. And anyone who's worked in any one of these languages before will just pick it up really easily. Uh, it's also written by the same guy who wrote Symphony, which is also in Drupal 8. So it works really well with that, and there's a lot of uh, uh, philosophies that jive really well with how we're doing everything else in Drupal. So uh, we had a sprint at the end of the Bay Area Drupal Camp this year to try and figure out some principles that we should use when refactoring the entire theme layer in Drupal 8. The first one is that we want to start with nothing. So rather than having an uh, overcomplicated assumption of what people might want to try and do, we wanted to start with zero and add to it. So this is like right now in Drupal, you start with everything and try and remove what you don't want. We're going to try and turn that around the other way and start with only what we want. If people want a div, they can add it themselves. We're not going to put it in there for them. We don't know if we're actually going to get this done. This is what we want. These are the principles. This is what we want. Uh, we're going to build from use cases. So right now in Drupal 7, we have built a system where anything is possible because we assume that someone will want to do everything at some point. Uh, but we don't have any use cases to back that up. We're like, well, maybe someone might want to add this thing in this way, and we'll just make it possible. <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're going to say, look, we know what people want 90% of the time, and we're going to build them that. And if they have some crazy edge case and that 1% or 10% that comes up, they can do it themselves. We're not going to put all of this complication into core for the edge cases that don't, we don't really know exist. Uh, we're going to provide tools. So rather than trying to solve everything from the beginning, we're going to solve the 90% use case and give that 10% the tools they need to do what they want. So you want to write an extension for Twig, you can do that. Uh, but we're not going to make it solve all the problems out of the box. 
we're going to try and consolidate stuff. We've got way too many template files and way too many theme functions. Let's recycle. Let's use the same code to write an item list every time you write an item list, whether it's a menu or whether it's a OL or a UL or whatever. It's just going to be the same. It's not going to have different divs depending on where it's called. Uh, same thing for tables. We want to have some components that we can reuse throughout core rather than having every module provide its own markup. Uh, visibility. We want people to know what's going on. Um, Twig is pretty good at this already. When you look at something, you can kind of tell what's going on. But we don't want to abstract things. We don't want to hide things. We want everything to be able to be kind of guessable, right? When you're like, oh, I need to override a menu, you're going to instantly look for a menu template. You're not going to look for an item list template. So we're going to give you a menu template. Um, just stuff like that that makes uh, Drupal a lot more intuitive rather than and, a... And actually connect them one place. So right. we don't have to go through system folders to find out HTML, TPL, PHP files kind of begin to make sense where, where, where they are. Instead Maybe. Of, instead of what we have now, where we kind of have, you know, you, go, you have to go through systems, you have to go, go treasure hunting. In Drupal. Yeah, so we're going to try and make it a lot easier to find everything, too. So we'll see how <laughs> perfect that goes. Is that a feature, or is that? No, that's a task. Yeah. All right, so we're also going to try and make everything a lot more consistent. Right now, depending on which piece of content is coming out and which part of the page, it can be rendered completely differently. It can have its own style sheet. It can look really different. It can have, you know, extra divs or not. Um, if we can start to consolidate and use the same functions everywhere, or templates, um, then the code will start to be the same everywhere, which makes it a lot easier for front-end developers to style. Like, oh, it's not this table that's different from every other table. I can style all tables at once. Um, so hopefully that will help a lot, too. And we're not going to try and dumb it down too much. Uh, in Drupal 7, there's a lot of this, like, oh, well, themers aren't going to understand that. But it turns out that, like, if we make something that makes sense, they can learn it. And if we make something that doesn't make sense, no one can learn it. So we're going to try not to dumb it down when we don't have to. Sometimes there are really complicated problems, and they require complicated solutions. And we're just going to do it. And when a complicated solution is necessary, we're going to trust that our front-end community can learn it. We're going to make it easier, but we're going to do it. And the last step is that the way stuff is organized needs to be driven by the semantics and not like a programmatic deconstruction of what's being written. Um, in HTML, a really good example is the uh, item lists, right? Like there are two specific elements for an unordered and an ordered list in spite of the fact that they both contain list items. And there's a reason for those being separate. In Drupal, we had one function because the developers looked at it and thought, oh, well, it's an li tag. That's exactly the same either way. We'll just flip. But it's semantically a different thing. And so we need our code in the theme layer to produce markup semantically, the way front-end developers think about it. And when things start to work the way people naturally think about them, everything will make a lot more sense. So to say, kind of the, the whole idea of reorganizing this is removing focus from being um, a system built by the developers, but more a system that makes sense to front-end developers. That's kind of the whole idea. I know it's crazy talk. But it's, that's kind of the whole idea. We just figured out over the years that maybe it made more sense. Maybe you could actually get more front-end developers into using Drupal because it made sense instead of giving them the content variable as the only option in the notes. And they can then use the next four years of bitching and moaning. So we're, we're hoping to make things work the way they're supposed to work and not the way developers think they should work. All right. So who wants to see Twig? All right, so I've got some examples of templates that we've already converted. Um, some of these screenshots are a little old, and they might have been changed since then. But generally speaking, uh, anytime you want to print a variable, you use double curly braces to print it. Anytime you want to run a command, you use a curly brace and a percent sign, and you put your little logic inside there. And anytime you want to add a comment, it's a curly brace and a pound sign to add a comment. People like that comment? Yeah. All right. I love that. <laughs> so the syntax should be really simple and intuitive. Uh, it's very straightforward. It just says what it does. Generally speaking, um, all of our theme functions are going to be replaced with template files. So there will only be one way to override markup from anywhere. That's crazy. It is crazy, but it's going to be awesome. And there's going to be a heck of a lot less code. Because as it turns out, it takes a lot less code to just write HTML than it does to write a PHP function to produce HTML. 
HTML and the curly brace twig stuff. Yeah. So if you really like that big, big module file with all your theme functions in it. You're out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. All right, so the username function just becomes a link tag or a span tag. The image function just becomes an image tag. The link function just becomes a link tag. Right, back to, back to sanity. Yes. Yeah, so, so when you go to print something in Twig, um, it'll sanitize it for you. Like you can take any like node, right? And in, in Drupal 7, you are responsible if you wanted to pull something out of a field. You've got to clean it up and make sure it was safe to display. Um, because of this problem, like 100% of all themes are insecure. We'll put a little rounding error in there, right? Um, this is going to prevent that. You will never have to sanitize your own data because Twig does it for you. So Twig can handle the translating and the sanitizing. You just say print and it'll be like, I know we need to take care of this for you. So um, Twig will make everything a lot more secure because of that, because we don't need to put that responsibility into the hands of people who've maybe never seen Drupal before and know that's important or any database driven okay. system. Right, or don't care. This just says you can print it and it'll handle all that stuff for you. Um, it turns out this is an example of our theme item list function, which in uh, Drupal 7 was really messy. Uh, when you turn into Twig, it's actually kind of elegant. So, yes? So we don't need to prepare variables in Twig because it all happens instead of before you render the template while you're rendering the template. So you can say print items and it'll spit them all out. Or you can say print items dot item and it'll print out one. Or you can say print items dot content and it'll print out whatever's inside that. So there's everything should be drillable. Um, right now, if you look at Drupal 8, it doesn't do that. We haven't built all of the flattening, compress a complicated object into string functions in yet, but Twig can do that, and that's what we're shooting for. So it sh you should, if you wanted to print a link inside a menu, you should be able to write a template file and just print menu.item.link.content and get only a piece of that out if you want. And it'll be secure and it'll be safe to just drop that into your file. Um, it's not done yet, but that's what we're shooting for. So we, it, we don't know. Um, I want to kill them all, but we need to make sure that before we, <laughs> before we remove that tool, that we have a comparable tool for front-end developers to be able to do the same thing. You want to add a variable to your template file, you want to change a variable in that template file, you've got to have a way to do it. So right now what we're doing is taking all of the logic out of the template files and moving it into preprocess. The next step is to take all the preprocess functions and turn them into twig rendering magic. Um, but we've got to make sure that there's a twig render magic alter something, right? So that, so that whoever's using a template file can still change what they need to change. And we haven't figured that step out yet, so right now I'm going to say there's still going to be preprocess because we're not taking tools away. That's really important. No. <laughs> Eventually, yes. Before Drupal 8 chips, I hope. We'll see. Um, okay, so here's all the problems with Drupal 7. Let's see if we've addressed some of these. Um, so Drupal specific template con functions. We've got Twig. It exists el elsewhere in the world. Fixed. Mixed data types. Sometimes we have an arrow. Sometimes we have square brackets. All template variables in Twig, it doesn't matter whether it's an object or an array or a string already, are all printed in exactly the same way. Fixed. Uh, different methods of printing, whether you print or print render, guess what? We've removed all calls to the render function from all templates in Twig. Fixed. PHP template being insecure, Twig will not let you run a SQL query without alteration. Um, and we're not going to let it do that in core. Automatically sanitized, fixed. Two ways to override markup, templates and theme functions, and way too many of both. We're eliminating all theme functions, so that'll only be one way, and <coughs> consolidating them at the same time, fixed. Uh, too many of everything. We've got most of these uh, consolidated already, but there's some core issues we could use some help on, so if you're around this weekend, 
that'll get fixed shortly. Um, and our complicated mix of subsystem, let's, let's see how we're doing with that. So here's where we started, right, where we had uh, way too much stuff. We're removing theme functions. That means all theme overrides are also gonna be removed, which means in your custom theme, you'll just be overriding templates, so that one removes two layers already. Process functions only existed for the purpose of flattening things like arrays into strings. We don't need that, Twig can do that for us, so that's obviously out. Render, all calls to render have been removed from template files. This will still exist as Drupal internal, but it's not gonna be part of your everyday life. You don't need to worry about render, Drupal render, all of that, so that's gone. Hook page alter will go away because we're switching to the blocks and layout system, so it's gonna be a little bit different how we deal with that, but we won't have that as part of our theme system anymore either. Pre-process functions I talked about, we wanna kill them. We're not really sure whether we can or not, at least in this release cycle. Uh, eventually, we should be able to get rid of them entirely. And that's a lot of pieces of our theme system that have been removed. It's a little better, right? Still has the kind of like satanic star there in the middle, but I'm gonna rearrange the bubbles or something. Right? So that's a lot better. Okay, so most things are fixed, uh, except for this whole difficult to learn thing. Uh, we're hoping that'll get taken care of too by doing everything really consistently, treating our theme functions the same, treating our um, styles and classes and div tags and all of that the same all across core. If it's consistent, people should be able to guess what's going on and that should make that better too. So let's talk about some other awesome things that we may or may not be able to do with Twig. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about Twig template inheritance? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so one of the really cool uh, features of Twig is the, your ability to override um, components of the templates. I'm not sure how this is um, intended to be in implemented in, a, in Drupal, but uh, you have a, you're right. Okay, so um, there's um, an ability for one template to inherit um, a super template, um, usually um, in a simple context that's a layout, so you can have a template describing maybe a, a feed of posts and that inheriting your um, site layout in turn. Um, and it does it in a very simple and elegant way. I don't know if we've got an example of a template like that, but um, it is a relatively simple process of doing. Um, there's also um, an override, sort of a, um, a, a hierarchy where you can actually override templates that have been placed into Twig. So should you need to override something like, something I'd imagine that Twig um, would be being built into Drupal core like display page, you can write customizations over the top of that so you can really get um, your own presentation layer working relatively easily. So, yeah. So, so this idea of Twig with template inheritance, how many people have like a theme that has like five or seven or 80 node TPLs in their theme? Yeah. So, the, the <laughs> so my idea of how the, the t template inheritance could work would be Basically, you, you have your one node TPL, and then a lot of those other TPL files are basically this like one line that you want to change. So you can mark up in the sort of the, the base node TPL to say, this section I want to be able to change in my variants or uh, what are they what are they called in Twig? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so you, yeah, you mark this one section and say this is a ch part that I want to change, and you call that a Twig block. Yay, naming conflicts. Oh, uh, anyway. Um, and then in your other uh, node TPL file, you don't repeat every single line. You just say, okay, I'm inheriting from the node twig file, and this is the one block that I want to change. And when you go and open it, it make, it's a lot clearer what's going on. You don't have to do like a diff and see what's different between, why is there like, so many node TPLs? It's really clear that I'm just changing this one bit. <laughs> this is all in my head, I don't know. <laughs> There's really great code samples of everything on the Twig page. The biggest problem about this is it's also called a block, yeah. which kind of... I, I opened an issue to change the name of blocks in Drupal, but that didn't fly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're probably going to call them a Twig block or something? Yeah, we, we're block. just going to call them a block. It'll, it'll, we'll figure, yeah, I don't know. But, well, but it's... Really it's a code block. Yeah. 
really it's really straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Yes. One more question. So, well, if you look at template files today, there's actually a lot of logic in there already. Like, there's a lot of like, if this thing exists, print it, or if this is a whatever, print that. So we right now are doing exactly the same thing in Twig as we're doing in PHP template. Um, there will be ability to change that around a little when we have more Twig stuff, but right now it's kind of the same. So I, I just wanted to say, so in in, in Drupal seven, a, a lot of these times we have we have these things that are in the system already, and like oh, we have this other completely different idea, and we have the system that needs, that's implemented in the same way that we need to like, get into the system. So then they just like, tack on this extra functionality, like theme hook suggestions being done inside pre-process functions, which is just supposed to be about variables. Suddenly you're changing the control flow of which template file you're using inside a mechanism that was meant to be, I'm just altering variables, right? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Is that kind of what you were talking about, or? So, uh, yeah. So, so variables um, in Twig files work completely differently than they work in PHP template because in PHP template you like have to go um. Does somebody want this variable? I know. I'll go and like render it and create it, or at least create a render array for it. So they do all this work to create all these variables just in case the themer wants to use it. In Twig, it's like, okay, um, I'm going to tell the Twig system that these variables can be made if you ask me to make them. Right? Um, and then when you render the template, it goes, oh, I actually do need this variable, and then go and grab it. There's a huge uh, potential performance gain because right now what we're doing is a little bit wasteful with all of this preparation of variables that may never get printed to the page. Where with Twig, it's kind of a, a out, inside out as opposed to an outside in process where you wait until the template file gets rendered and then Twig says, what's in this template file? Oh, it's this variable. Let me go make that for you. Whereas PHP template was like, let me make all these variables and then when they're called, we'll just spit them out. So that's part of why we can get rid of pre-process is because that whole phase of preparing stuff doesn't need to exist anymore. We just need to make sure, what was that? Right, it's like a mid-process, right? Like while we're printing stuff, we'll make it. And, and, and PHP, PHP template was, was kind of sloppy in how it did all of this. Twig is really elegant in that all of your template files get compiled into classes and they can get saved in memory, which could also be really fast too. If you have uh, one node with 300 comments on it, in PHP template, that file needs to get read from disk 300 times and have those variables inserted, or if you're using APC, it gets stat 300 times, and that's expensive. If you have a class in memory, you just execute it 300 times, and that's really fast. So this is the kind of thing where like, it says much TBD because we actually haven't had enough of it done to do any legitimate benchmarking, but there's a potential here for a huge gain, not only in performance, but in like the amount of memory it takes to build a page, right? When you have a giant render array that's sitting there, waiting for parts of it to be rendered, or maybe all of it, depending on which part of the cycle you're in, it, it's messy. But here you're just like, you know, we don't need any of that until the time that we render it, and then we can go and get only what we need and print that to the page. So it will be really nice if we can get all of this other stuff out of there, which would be good. So in Drupal 8, we're gonna have this concept of context that'll exist all the time, and we haven't actually done a lot of work with the uh, blocks and layouts people to figure out how Twig will have access to that, but we know that it will. So there will be a bunch of stuff that's available in kind of a global context that you can use to figure out like, who's looking at the page, how does it need to be displayed, is this going to like a web services request or is it being printed to a browser, like is it mobile or not, like there's a bunch of factors that go into that like global context of how this content should be created that Twig can then use to print things differently even. So um, it could be really cool, we haven't built it yet. Um, and then this last bullet point, this is going to exist in, in contrib only, so don't get too excited. 
but um, we were talking about this in Munich, where uh, it's possible for the first time in history for your Drupal site to be aware of what's going on in your template files. So right now, if you're a themer and you're like, why are there all these if statements to see if variables are set before stuff's getting printed? I don't care whether somebody went to the system page and like changed my whatever. I'm just going to print what I want to print. And what that does is it breaks Drupal's interface, right? Like I said, no, I don't want a menu here. And it's like, well, it printed anyway because I removed the if test in my template file to see if it was supposed to print or not. So now your interface is broken and that can be really frustrated. Frustrating for, for end users not to understand that their theme isn't respecting these Drupal settings. Well, now we have the ability for the theme to read the template files and say, hey, this is getting printed whether that setting is set or not. So I'm going to disable the user interface so that whoever's looking at this page doesn't think they can turn off the menu or doesn't think they can turn off the user pictures or whatever it is. The You need it, and then you know, six down on the down the boat, the clients come back and want to change something in the on the note page and want to drag it around. Or you forgot that you kind of you know, custom built everything in this this note TPL, um, and you're gonna instead of using those co couple of hours to figure out why is my cache not clearing this data out and so forth and so forth, we can actually make this magic land of unicorns where we can have an idea of what actually goes on. So if you take this one step further and say, okay, well, if the user interface can be based on the template files, maybe we can just write the template files first. Okay, that's the direction I was expecting. Okay, so if you were like, I want to write template files for my site, you write a bunch of HTML code, you drop in the variables you want to drop in, we can have something that tells you what the names of those variables are. You put them into your Drupal site, and then Drupal goes, here you go, I've created everything you need to match that. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the possible performance gains thing. Yeah, so I mean, menus are cached anyway, so it's not a big deal. But there are things like that that are going to be. Yeah. But but that actually is down to when we're talking about how to get new people into this. I mean, the first reaction you got when you got into looking at these TPL files was, where does all this crap come from? Instead of I have this ideal markup I know works in all browsers and every mobile phone and blah blah blah, so you can actually now have new people coming in that doesn't know the magic of Drupal and you know, just write the markup and make this you know, double curly bracket kind of thing, put the title in here, like every other same template system would do. So it's kind of when we're talking about the, is, it, is this going to be hard for new people to learn? We kind of expect it to be natural to learn, like, hey, write your markup and put your variables in and you're done, kind of magic way. I'm, Well, um, well, I, I know at some uh, some front end meetups I run, we will have hard a hard time to find issues to bitch and moan about. So we need to like change that way of communicating. Oh, well, I know that the SQL module that's kind of come out on GitHub will help us with that, but still, yeah. I'm a, I've been developing in PHP for a long time, and uh, when I approach Drupal, it seems very, very foreign to me. So uh, trying to tie this into the broader community, uh, I'm just going to have a few wins to drag uh, new people into the um, Drupal world. All right, all right, all right. So one, one, one last thing on our bullet list here. The second one is um, we, we're going to try and build some really awesome variable inspector. So if you get a template that says menu, and you don't really know what's in that menu, you can say, hey, Twig, what's in this menu? And it'll be like, here are all of the variables that you can print. And it'll work a little bit, we hope, like the token drill system right now where you're like, oh, look, there's a node. And you click on it, and it's like, here's all the stuff in the node. And you can click through. Um, so this is one of these things we were hoping to get done by two weeks from now. So if anyone wants to work on that this weekend, we're going to be sprinting and you can help us. But um, that, that can definitely get in, I think, even maybe if we can sell it, we can get it in after. But um, So we're hoping to make it really easy for people to figure out how, what they can do in their files. So this whole thing, like I actually wrote a new theme layer for Drupal called Token Template that did exactly that. 
Um, but there's a lot of reasons a lot of people didn't like that. Um, so what we're going to end up doing is, is there's a lot of similarities between like tokens flatten and sanitize and produce output. And so we can use all of the functions that we're using in tokens to flatten and sanitize output in the render system. Um, so there will be recycling, right, where we don't have to rewrite a lot of this stuff because it already exists. But we're not actually using token. That's also kind of a Drupalism, right, whereas we'd rather just use Twig the way it does it. So uh, the the decision of whether we would use Twig or like token template or something, we had a, a sprint that Jen helped organize last March, was it? So less than a year ago, and we we spent like three days just like going over all the different problems, and you know that's where those slides were. What are the problems? Um, what are how can we solve all those problems? And then we started looking at systems that could help us solve those systems. And when we looked at Twig, we're like, okay, yeah, check, 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 check. check. It's like okay. Interesting thing is that, that normally what the way this has been done in Drupal world is a bunch of developers sit down in a room and decide something great in developer land. And then a year and a half later, they give that to front end land and the peasants will rise and again sh scream at the developers. And we did it another way around. We had a conference in, in Amsterdam at that same way, the same weekend front end, the first front end United. Um, where we basically had, you know, I was expecting three people to show up to the code spend, and we had about 80 people showing up or, or all in all, and 15 to 20 people actually sitting down and just say, okay, let's identify what our real problem is. We then sent that to San Francisco. We then went to the bar, got <laughs> pissed drunk, and the next morning, magic happened. That was the day when, when chicks had, made, had solved all the solutions. Yeah. 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 So yeah, our, our our strategy was basically instead of it just being developers, which is how we got the render system, the the, the developers got together in like DrupalCon um, Seged, uh, which I didn't attend, and like decided this is a render system. And then Drupal Seven development happened, and I was working merrily on cleaning up the TPLs, and then all of a sudden, right before Code Freeze, render system lands, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, so I I immediately did not like render system at all. But it was just me and all these developers, and there wasn't any other theme people who were sort of in the queue and active. And it was like it was way too late by the time it already was in Drupal Seven. I'm like ah. Um, so this time, we decided, okay, let's get developers and front-end developers in the same room. So we had, we had CHX, we had Effulgencia on Skype, like, 24 hours. Um, we had um, Chris Vanderwater, who's the Blocks and Layouts Initiative lead, um, myself, Jen, um, and, and then we actually opened up a, a Google Plus Hangout, or what? Oh yeah, it was WebEx when we had all these other uh, front-end developers who, who joined in remotely. Um, and so all of us together came up with the Twix solution. And at the same time, we had the Amsterdam thing going on. That was the crazy thing we were about it. When we talked about it the first day, we actually had a demo of a dude who did a, actually a version of my theme, the Mothership. He renamed it to the Mother Twig and actually implemented Twig into it and shows us the demo of it because people were like, nah, we don't need anything new. We just need something clean. And then we saw that, especially the block things. We're like, holy fuck, when can we get that? John, John, can I get that? <laughs> um, no, so what actually happened on the, on the last day of, the day of this conference, we kind of saw what was coming out of San Francisco and like, okay, let's just figure it out if people actually like this. So we should actually push forward with it or should we just like hide in the hole? There was kind of a room this size of people. Like, there was actually interesting sessions going on in this one. This was just kind of, hey, we're going to brief you about what they did in San Francisco. And the kind of feeling we got already at that point so early on in the process that this was exactly what people have been waiting for and which kind of made me feel happy because I just thought it was me who was being a little bitch for six years. It wasn't. So this was in Munich where we had this session and we're like, did, did people actually want this? Like, is this what we want? And everyone wanted it. And it was so like, oh. Actually want to have a UI instead of just more code. Well, we can do that too. So, so that's another thing, right? We haven't mentioned that yet, but like we can't have, like, some people use WordPress, right? And there's like these editors where you can like open up, like here's your style sheet and here's your template and you can like actually edit them in your browser. We can't do that in PHP template because it's horribly insecure to expose PHP code in the browser, but Twig code is safe. We can do that, and we won't do it in core. But in Contrib, someone can write a module that gives you a UI that lets you edit all your does, stuff. Does anybody remember the contemplate module? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah don't use that. But, <laughs> but if it got converted to be twig based, it would be perfectly acceptable solution. You can install it in Drupal 8. Yeah. So contemplate and get it. It can come back. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a bunch of really stuff you can you can use Twig for. Uh, email templates, there's also like a JavaScript uh, framework, like Twig.js, I guess, so that you can use your node template, whether that nodes, node is rendered like in PHP on your server or whether it's rendered like client side in some kind of external thing. So there's a lot of really awesome places where Twig can be recycled everywhere. What did you say? Field, are there, is, so is there any big change to field formatters? Well, I mean, the biggest change is that there's no theme functions anymore, right? So all of your formatters will be using template files. Um, I mean, we're doing a lot of work on field templates anyway, because they're so bad, but. So um, that's a really great question, field formatters. Um, I know a little bit about them, but why don't you come to the sprint and you and I can talk and <laughs> we'll figure out the answer, okay? All right, so speaking of how people can help us, um, we've got a lot of uh, stuff that we're, we're, we've completed, right? Like we, we've got a bunch of template files that need to be converted to Twig, which is in our done in our sandbox, but we need to move that to core. Um, we've got to convert some more theme functions. I think there's like 20 left or something. There's not very many um, into template files, and there's some pretty good documentation on how to do that. Um, we've got to create and test patches against core. So we're trying to take all of the work that we've already done and just put it into core really fast because we've got two weeks to do it. Um, and we can use a lot of help with that. So if you can write patches, we need you in that room um, on Saturday. And then we also have a, a, a bunch of people who want to clean up the markup that's in core. Um, John is going to be sprinting on cleaning up the CSS. So it may be really good to have people who want to clean up the markup, working with people who want to clean, clean up the CSS so we don't break everything at the same time, which is good. Um, and we have uh, issues where you can just write HTML. You don't need to write a patch. You don't need to install Drupal. You just want to show me the HTML you want. Tell us what so, you want, yeah, yeah, and then so we can so the, fix the it. The crazy thing here is we are actually trying to figure out what is it, what kind of markup is it that we as knowledgeable people who knows the front end and how browsers interact with it, what is it that we need? instead of going the other way around. I know it's kind of in Drupal land, it's against everything that we have always thought there were, and it's kind of a revolution, and we can see the red flags and how the people storm towards the castle. We kind of need people to do that. I mean, it's, I mean, we are like four or five people, and I got hit by all kinds of stuff the last two months, so I didn't have the time to do it. And we, a lot of this is just sitting down and actually just you know, walking through the templates and figure out what is it that I want to have here. How is that? How is that my menu should look? How should this list thing look? How should that thing look? I mean, it's just defining it so we can actually pass it further down to people who know how to get this thing into code. That's kind of one of the most important things at, the, at this point. And and the problem is that, well. I pretty much have hackled John for a couple of years because he was responsible for the evil in Drupal 7. And John has now passed the torch down to me because apparently I have been the loudest, loudest about every, everything that's been wrong. So apparently now everything that's going to be wrong in Drupal 8 is going to be my fault, right? <laughs> so I know I think myself of being brilliant, but I'm pretty sure I'm not that clever. So I actually need some people to help me take the fall down, which means... <laughs> Which means that we, actually, that we need more than one face to look at the markup and look at the code and look at the CSS. I mean, John has an excellent post right now uh, waiting around the whole, how do we name CSS? If he makes any mistakes right now and that stuff gets into core, we are going to be burned down with that crap for years. I mean, that's, I mean that's, that's the problem. You make one tiny mistake now, and we're going to have a lot of fun with that each and every day for the next couple of years. So is this uh, sprint uh, tomorrow going to be titled uh, Responsibility Shared? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's um, actually I am. I have a session later today that's kind of try to wrap up, you know, everything why stuff started out as it did and why we have ended up in this kind of. It's not a nightmare because we have you know, learned to work around with it, but this kind of. <laughs> maybe I've just been here so long, so it's not a nightmare for me anymore. But because I'm from from Scandinavia, so it's just always dark. <laughs> and maybe that's the thing, and being down here in the sun is kind of like that yellow thing out there. I'm getting a little bit frightened of Anyways, we, the, the thing is that right now we have for the first time actually an, an idea of 
Holy crap, developers are listening to front-end developers. Oh my god, crazy talk. What? Okay, so what we need to do is get all of the front-end developers. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a session this afternoon. For 45 minutes, no <laughs> <laughs> so if any of you are front-end developers and have opinions on what we should be doing in Drupal, we need your input. Tell us what you want, and we can try to make some changes. Um, we've got to configure out how to consolidate more of our template files. We've got issues against almost everything in core, but we need people to write patches. We need people to test patches. We need people to log on and just say, I agree with this, whatever, um, just so the core people know it's important. Um, and then we also need to be able to uh, rethink the template suggestion process. There's a really complicated issue, so if you're a super developer and want to figure out how to solve some really hard problems, um, there's some issues around that as well. Um, and then we want to make it really easy to change your template files in different places. There's a patch for that too. And then the last thing is trying to figure out how to, to redo pre-process, um, which this is not urgent, but we need people to start thinking about it because there's a lot of work to do once we figure out what we're going to do. Um, and then we've got to start converting things all into Twig format too. So there's a lot of stuff we're going to be doing at the Sprint on Saturday. Um, so everybody, put your hand up if you've written HTML or CSS or JavaScript before. <laughs> keep them up, everybody. Keep them up. OK, put your hand down if you've uh, written a patch before. Put your hand down if you've, you've all written patches before. <laughs> OK, keep your, keep your hand up if you haven't written patches before. Keep your hand up if you haven't written tests before. Keep your hand up if you haven't contributed to core before. So tomorrow morning before the sprint, there is a how to contribute. So come along to that, OK? Everybody with their hand up, come along to that one. What was that? So um, the, the HTML5 initiative is basically finished up already. And I'm 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 pretty sure Aria is in the template files already, um, so they just came along for the ride when they got converted to Twig. So. But I think that's kind of the strength of this is that I mean even like we had all this discussion in the, in the CSS thread about are we going to alphabetize classes or have some kind of logical organization? But with these template files, I think that's really the power of it is that if some people want to use it as a section or a function or want to call it an article, that's fine. So we're doing a subset of the list we just talked about tomorrow, the sprint. So if you want to come help, we need you. Um, and we've got maybe like five minutes for questions. So do we agree that it would be a bad thing if we ended up implementing a scripting language inside a template language for a scripting language? Uh, you mean and title three? I'm, I think we did that already. <laughs> we're trying to get away from that. R right, but but yeah. So the 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 problem. So the thing that the magic that happens in the background is basically it is a new syntax, right? It's this Twig syntax, which has been around for a while. A lot of other projects are developing or using the same syntax, even though they're not using the Twig syntax, or they're not using the Twig system. They still have the same syntax. Um, but the, the magic in the background for the Twig system is that it takes that syntax um, and it actually converts it. it, it compiles it from that into an actual PHP snippet of code and then caches that. Right? So when you're actually loading a page, you're not even looking at the Twig files anymore. You're just pulling up these PHP snippets that are... So, so, yeah, and I, and I would just say that that as a templating language, PHP sucks. <laughs>
Go ahead. I don't believe, I, I don't think that it prevents anything. Um, it has all the control structures. That actually, yeah, actually. Um, so it provides all the regular control structures that you'd expect, um, loops, uh, if condition statements and all that. And you can also go one step further and actually tell Twig which of those control, control structures you want it to be able to give the front-end developers access to. So you can modify that. Yep. would be, why, why use a template engine, we can just use PHP. PHP is a template language. And back then, I, I think it was like seven or eight years ago, there were, there were template engines around, you know, there was Smarty and others. Um, what do you say to that? How is it different today? Why is Twig a better option? Um, why did we decide PHP was the template language for us and now a template language is the template language for us? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I've been doing Drupal for eight years now, and I remember this is Adrian Russo who came up with the PHP template uh, language. Um, and if you look at the alternatives at the time, Smarty was not the Smarty it is today, right? It was really... Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, the, it, it wasn't until like three or four years later that another templating language was developed called, um, oh, what the heck was it? It was the opposite, of, it, it had an opposite name of Smarty. Does anyone remember this? It wasn't dummy, it was like, um, yeah, it, it was something similar to that. It was, it was called dummy because it was like, I'm trying to not do all the stupid stuff that Smarty's doing. Um, the, they weren't written in a way that was actually particularly fast. They were very slow because they were trying to interpret their own syntax on the fly every time you requ requested them. So PHP template was a really good alternative to those templating languages at the time. Um, but, P but Twig is new, and it, it takes advantage of a lot of really new stuff in PHP, right, where we couldn't have used it in Drupal 6 because Drupal 6 didn't support a new enough version of PHP to do all the stuff that Twig does. So now we have cool new toys, and someone wrote a template language that uses the cool new toys and makes it performant. Twig is object-oriented. It's, it's really fast. There's like a bunch of stuff that we can do with Twig that we can't do in PHP template. We can sanitize everything automatically. We can run functions like T so developers don't have to. We can, but no one has to understand data structures. Like there's just a lot of places where it, we've come out on top. So it was one of these things where like, yeah, we solved this problem years ago, but technology advances fast, so let's reevaluate this problem and the solutions that are out there and think about it again. I don't think there's anybody who goes that, that this is the perfect end solution for everything. It's kind of, you know, uh, chicks kind of came up with Twig first and tried to hunt people down in Denver doing the code sprint, where a Jens um, theme system pretty much got killed over a table. Um, and the reason that chicks wanted to have in because this whole sandboxing thing and no, other of us just want to have an easy way to drill down to variables. So it's kind of a match made of as much other technology. You got, hey, I get my little thing in, I get my little thing in, I get my little thing in. You have this bastard child. But then suddenly we figure out the bastard child here is actually somebody wrote it for us and we can use it and everybody seems to be happy at this point. In three years we will probably be angry as hell. So, so I actually, I didn't want Twig. I thought PHP was much better and we should just all sanitize our own variables and do it whatever in PHP. But uh, it turns out that everybody else wanted Twig. And I was like, well, if everyone is happy with this solution, then that's obviously the way we should move forward. Yeah, and, and, and I would just like to add that I was also not a fan of Twig when we went into that sprint deciding what we were going to do. I was like, okay, I don't, I don't think we want to go to another scripting language, right? Um, and when we went through the problem space and went through the possible solutions, then Twig just became an obvious choice. Scott? 
Yeah, just a really quick question. Um, I've never used Twig before, but I have used Liquid. Are they like? Is Liquid based on Twig? It, those who are familiar with yeah, Liquid syntax and things like Shopify and. Um, it looks to really familiar, like yeah. very much the same. Are they in the same family? So they're both, they're both I think, they come from a similar heritage. So are you, you're using Jekyll or something like that with liquid layouts or...? Uh, Shopify. Right, okay. So, yeah, I, I don't know which one came first. I think they were actually um, in conjunction because... Um, so Jekyll's off a um, Ruby um, platform and they both have shared from uh, Django, I think, the Django heritage. So, yeah, similar heritage, both. I think one of the things that... We, is really important about this is actually really from outside the Drupal world. And I think that's something that sometimes we forget. Um, but if you look at Happy Cog, if you look at ClearLeft, if you look at some of the, the very best thinkers in the wider web world, the reasons they've stayed away from something like Drupal is because it doesn't give them the control over what's coming out of it. And this is finally a chance to actually use something similar to Expression Engine or some of these other platforms that do do a very good job of it while still keeping what's important about Drupal with the flexibility of the content modeling and everything else. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not enough of a developer to have that great an opinion of the technical merits, but just in order to put it on a level playing field and make it the platform that someone like Jeremy Keith would pick up and use, I think that's an admirable goal and it's worth it. Um, one thing I just want to kind of keep in perspective is that we keep talking about like Twig exists elsewhere in the world, but there are less front end developers that know Twig than there are front end developers that know Drupal. So we do kind of need to keep that in check and be like, oh, it exists, but it's like, yeah, you, you know. I'll, I'll, but I'll, no, I'll put it this way. It, it's, I mean, it's probably the easiest language I've ever written, yeah. ever, it's, ever. It's, it's, it's like, right. oh, let me just get this loop right. Okay, done. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, yeah, it, it's going to be the same crap, anyways, and it's going to frustrate the hell of a hell of a of, out of us. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's no, it's. I mean, it's going to be. I don't think we're going to have any problem with that. That was actually one of the, the ground rules. The thing about not dumbing it down. That this whole. I mean. It might, we're going, might going to have some menu TPL files. It's going to be hellish to look at. But instead of trying to drag that variable out of thin air and figuring out where does that come from, we kind of can see it now or drill down to it or print it out on the page instead of the, the, the way we... Wouldn't it be nice if core was your good base theme? <laughs> what do we have done that Drupal? I mean, all these funny hours of using. You guys can work on Drupal 9. <laughs> I already have a Drupal 9 module out, so. Uh, is, is that on? Lacker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are there any more uh, questions? Over there. world, right, where it was the kind of thing where like I was writing something and someone's like, hey, have you heard of this? And I was like, no. Um, so it definitely wasn't in the front of our mind, but it's the kind of thing where it's like, I can totally see that as a contrib thing where someone comes out with a module and it's like, ta-da, everything works the way you want it to. Um, so it's definitely like, this is one of these things where when we first decided on Twig, we had a very limited um, set of requirements. And then as we've been working with it, it's like, oh, we also get this, we also get this, we also get this, we also get this, we also, and there's just this, all this yeah. stuff that you can do that we didn't even think about. Yeah, and, and this is exactly what's great about open source, of course, right? Because so, the more people who are contributing to it, the, the more solutions that you, you end up with. So instead of just Drupal developers working on the Twig system, we have all these like other people who are also using the Twig system, and we end up with a better, more, you know, more robust, more flexible system than we could have come up with ourselves. The thing that we came up with by ourselves was Drupal 7's theme system, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're, it's probably going to be the same issue. I mean, so there's a bunch of like licensing inclusion stuff that we haven't quite figured out where like Drupal has its set of rules, but like we break them when we feel like it. Um, 
I think that what's going to happen is Drupal 7 is going to ship with whatever version of Twig ships with, and then there's going to be, at some point, a new version of Twig, and then there's going to be a contrib module that'll help update it. It's a little harder because it's so ingrained in everything that Drupal does. Like, uh, when you get a new version of jQuery, you have to provide all of the new functions that rewrite. It's going to be the same thing, only a lot more work. Um, so we'll we'll see. I mean, it could be that you know Drupal sevens around for two years or Drupal eights around for two years, and we've got to deal with it for two years. But I don't know. If someone gets angry enough, they'll write something. I, I think that's an excellent question because it makes me think of something that I hadn't thought of before. So the, the problem with jQuery, the reason why we couldn't update to jQuery was because we'd written our you know our libraries built on top of jQuery in a way that wasn't really the best practices, and so they were really tied to that specific version of jQuery. And when you had the new version of jQuery, then we would have essentially would have had to rewrite all of our, our jQuery stuff. So uh, I think that we need to be really careful with the way we write our filters, because those are the things that we're tying heavily to the way Twig works right now, and if that you know, system changes. So um, this would be an excellent question to uh, like ask Dries or ask the other initiative leads at the Drupal 8 um, core conversation later this afternoon um, because it's not just Twig, it's all these other Symfony components that that complies to. On that. Um, the Symphony community is really aware about how these components are being integrated into other projects. So backwards compatibility and making sure upgrades don't break what's, what, how people are using them is a really uh, high priority for the community. Yep. Okay, we're, we're out of time. It's lunchtime now though, so if you want to grab these guys uh, before you leave and force them to not have lunch. Otherwise, thank our team. <laughs>for a great conversation and please do consider coming to the code sprint tomorrow or the how to contribute session tomorrow please <laughs> thank you very much